Welcome Dolphins fans, haters, and everyone in between to your favorite show discussing the greatest franchise in sports, the Miami Dolphins. This is the Fins Pod. My name is Moose, your host, and unfortunately, in the calm before the storm preceding the regular season, the only news that continues to persist around the Miami Dolphins is regarding Xavier Howard, and things are not looking up in that situation, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at where they stand right now, where things can head and some potential outcomes. Let's get to it and let's dive in. With that, with just knowing all that on the table, you know, the politics side of it, I think I deserve it though. But you know, I'm also in Miami also, you know, everybody don't know about Miami. Um, so you gotta, I feel like we get that over- big football market. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like you get overlooked out here in Miami because it's not a big football market like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Do something crazy to get recognized, so. yeah. As you do something crazy, but if I just had like a three, four, you know, some guy do three and four, probably have one pick, you know, they get all the recognition and stuff like that because they on the yeah. big market, you know. Like I said, man, um, you got to do something crazy to, to do it. So, you know, with that, with that, all that on the table, man, I feel like I deserve it and I feel like I worked hard and I put a hell of a season up this year. Before we jump into the Howard news head on, we got some general Dolphins updates to cover. And it was announced that the team would be participating in not one, but two joint practices this preseason. They're going to be heading up to Chicago a few days early to compete and scrimmage the Bears. And then the following week, they're going to be hosting the Atlanta Falcons in Miami, who they're also going to be facing in the regular season. And look, joint practices are hardly new. Many coaches across the NFL have been using them to their benefit for years. And the coach who popularized it was Bill Belichick. Over the last 20 years, it was him who made it a staple in his offseason routine, and it's no surprise that his protege, Brian Flores, is following suit. And this isn't going to be the last time. Expect the Dolphins to be part of joint practices every season, as long as Flo is the head man. And there are real benefits to doing this, too. During training camp, the roster is going to end up facing the same guys over and over again. There are only so many defensive linemen for the offensive line to see and practice against. Only so many wide receivers for defensive backs to cover and practice against. You get the gist. And this not only erodes competition over time, just having to see the same guy's face over and over again, it also makes it harder to evaluate your own guys as a coach. How does a coach know whether his guy made a great play or if that guy made that play because he was able to jump the route because he's learned the opponent's tendencies now that he's faced him over a three dozen times or a hundred times in practice doing the same rep over and over again. Now he knows that guy's tendency. He's like, oh, this guy's running a slant. I'm going to jump the route. You can't really tell if your defensive back is making a good play or if it's just a result of playing the same guy over and over again. And facing new competition, it forces guys to reestablish themselves and translate things that they learned in camp into new environments. Miami's defense is going to be able to work against a guy like Justin Fields and see how they stack up against a mobile quarterback. And then their offensive line can work against Khalil Mack. So Miami's going to get benefits facing the Bears. These practices, they can be measuring sticks for how a team you know, how far a team is in their progress, and it allows coaches a real chance to see where they need to focus going forward in practice and in the preseason. Look, they're only preseason games right now, so the fact that Miami is choosing to have joint practices for two of them, it speaks to how much this staff values them. And so what are your thoughts on joint practices? Do you like them, or would you rather the team kind of keep all their stuff in-house prior to the season starting, not really tip their hand by doing joint practices and sharing their plays and concepts with other teams before the season starts. Let us know. But next up, it's time to talk about X. Miami's brightest star is not happy. He's not happy with the front office, and he's making it all the more clear. Most recently, Xavier Howard shared a story on Instagram with a quote stating, quote, they won't realize how big a part you play until you're not there to play it no more. End quote. I think I think that explains itself. Look, when a player is not happy and it gets to the point where it's now being expressed publicly, the reason is almost always the same. The team is nowhere close to where the player is in terms of money. 
If progress was truly being made and a deal looked like it was on the horizon, or at least a deal was being worked towards, would Howard be posting cryptic shit like this? Of course not. He posted this because he wants to let people know he feels like he's being consistently undervalued. He's being undervalued by the Dolphins in not only the front office, but in what they're offering him in terms of years and guaranteed money going forward. He essentially just wants to feel like he's getting paid for what his play is. And the Dolphins want a good deal. So, of course, this is not working. Howard does not have a lot of leverage. All of his leverage resides in whether he plays or not. That's the only power he has, considering he already signed a contract. Miami could realistically not do anything, let him sit and just lose millions of dollars. But that's not really ideal for either party, as we've touched on before in previous episodes. So either a deal needs to be struck or both parties needs to, they just need to head separate ways. We got to I know it sucks, but if the, if a deal isn't made, it's really beneficial for Miami now to move on and try to maximize the value. And as more time passes between all of this, you know, discontent and all of this public angst that he's expressing and between a deal getting done, then it becomes more and more clear that a deal is possible. And we've said this before, but it might as well be mentioned again. This new Dolphins regime does not operate on a star player to star player basis. No, they want a multitude of good players who know their role and don't play above or below it. And this not only keeps the team humming and running like a well-oiled machine, it allows for consistent winning, and it also lets them pay guys at the appropriate cost, at the role that they're offering. The second you get into superstar territory, you get into superstar contracts. And that cripples a team's flexibility and is clearly not the way Chris Greer wants to operate. And if Xavier Howard doesn't buckle and give in, which I don't think he's going to based on how he's acted, and I don't think he needs to either based on how he's performed, then Miami realistically could look to move on and to trade trade him. And the chatter is growing. As a recent report from NFL.com's Michael Silver indicates, people around the league also think that the possibility of a trade is very real. He reported, quote, There's a lot of trade chatter concerning Dolphins all-pro cornerback Xavier Howard, who led the NFL with 10 interceptions in 2020 and is unhappy with his contract. Howard, who signed a five-year deal, $75.25 million extension, two years ago, wants a new, improved deal in the wake of his stellar 2020 season. He's not likely to get it from Miami. It would likely take at least a first-round pick, plus the willingness to pay up, to land him. There are several teams all in win-now mode pondering such a move. If no one steps up to meet Miami's price, Howard, who skipped the off-season program, could try to force the issue by holding out of training camp. He could be fined $50,000 a day in that scenario. Stay tuned, end quote. And therein lies the rub. This report sounds like it came from the Dolphins who are looking for a trade partner. But it won't be easy to find a team that's not only willing to give Miami serious capital, like a first-round pick, but also pay Howard what he feels like he deserves. Bleacher Report, he, they released an article with some hypothetical trade ideas, and in it, they did propose one for the Dolphins and Howard. In the deal, written by Brad Gagnon of Bleacher Report, Miami would send the Baylor product to the Dallas Cowboys in exchange for a 2022 first and offensive lineman Connor McGovern. And this is a sort of trade that Miami is realistically looking at if they're going to move on from Howard. I don't think it's going to happen specifically just like this, but if Howard is moved, it's going to be a team that is looking to make the playoffs. They feel like, hey, getting a star corner that we can put in our defense is all we really need to take that step. We have confidence in our offense, and this will really help you know, bolster our team and make us a viable playoff contender. That's the only type of team that's going to be willing to give up a first-round pick because in their eyes, look, that pick's going to be in the 20s. It's worth it. And look, the return in this specific instance, in this hypothetical with the Cowboys, it's decent considering the circumstances. Miami gets a first-round pick, one that could easily be a top-20 pick if the Cowboys struggle, as I would expect them to. Plus, McGovern can compete on the inside for Miami and provide more depth. 
Now, looking across the league, perhaps a team like the Cardinals, the Raiders, teams looking to make a splash, one of them could pull the trigger. But keep in mind, Xavier Howard is an all-pro talent who can change your defense the second he steps on the field. That's why his loss would hurt so much and why the Dolphins should still make it their main priority to keep him around. If not, then I hope Chris Greer can get something resembling equal return. That's going to be hard. But that return could benefit Miami in the long run, right? If if they do get a first-round pick, like in that Cowboy scenario, that will help them in the long run. But there's no doubt that the short-term hit that the Finns are going to take from losing a guy like Howard, that would be felt hard. Lastly, we're going to talk some broadcasting news. After years of Bob Greasy, Nat Moore, and Dick Stockton doing Miami's preseason games, the team has decided to move on to a new era. And as much as I love those guys, it was clearly time. The game had evolved well past the years of Bob Greasy and Nat Moore, and despite Dick Stockton's incredible voice, his age has it began to show. It did. I know if you guys were regular watchers of the preseason, which if you're listening to this podcast, you definitely are, you know what I'm talking about. It was time to move on, and now Miami's going to feature team legend Jason Taylor, Audible host and former player, as well as media member Kim Bocamper, as well as Steve Goldstein doing the play-by-play. And the game should be far more lively now and entertaining with some younger guys in the booth. And when Kim Kim Bocamper is part of your youth movement, you know that the broadcast booth was getting old and dusty before. But it's going to be exciting to hear those guys and this new injection of talent into the preseason, as well as get back to football overall. We're less than a month away from actual football being played. Year two of the Tua era is almost officially underway, and I cannot wait. Keep it locked in here with the Fins Pod, as we're only going to get ramped up heading towards September. And what a great play that time by the X-Man, Xavier Howard. You got to be quick on your brakes, because as soon as you put your foot in the ground, he's putting his foot in the ground, and it's a race to the ball. There with terrific cover. Hey, that was too high, but that was good. I think he's the best cornerback in the game right now, hands down. Throws a deep block, and it's intercepted. Second of the night by Xavier Howard. And that is one of the great interceptions you will see. Xavier Howard blurs the screen with a spectacular interception. You kind of see guys that stand out that make plays, and he's one of the guys that's always making plays. That's going to do it for us here today. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Fins Pod. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Timothy Ritchie, member of the pod and supporter of the show over on Patreon. Check that out. Link is in the description or head over to patreon.com slash Fins Pod. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Please remember to like the video if you enjoyed the show. Subscribe just so you never miss a chance to chat about your Miami Dolphins. Remember that the show is available on all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, and of course on YouTube. Continue the convo with us over on Twitter and Instagram, at FinsPod, and I hope you all have an amazing day. Until next time, stay safe. Love y'all.